Yo! Welcome everyone to World Update 16. It sure has been a while. The time lapse for this episode has been split into its own video, so if you haven't seen that already, check out the i-card in the top right, or the first link in the video description. This right here is my brand new flower farm. 12 flower farms in total for 12 flower types. Each flower farm itself is able to produce 43,000 flowers per hour, and each of the flower farms has a dedicated bone meal farm to supply with bone meal. Both the flower farm and bone meal farm designs are designs from El Mango, simply because, well, those designs work, and they work well. Each bone meal farm is capable of producing 13,500 bone meal per hour, and then once you combine that with the recycling of seeds into bone meal from the flower farms themselves, you end up as if only having a deficiency of about 50 to 100 bone meal per hour per farm. Which is like really good. We're talking about like above 99% efficiency for our, these flower farms. And when you're getting 43,000 flowers per hour, that sounds pretty darn good. Some fun construction sets about this build. Some of the most used blocks include mud bricks at 65,000 mud bricks. Glass blocks at 59,000, with most of those being stained glass. And copper at 28,000 copper blocks. And as you can already tell, this is not waxed copper, and so it will oxidize with time. And the end result, I think, will be uh, pretty visually pleasing. This entire build, according to my replay mod files, took a total of 116 hours. That's prepping, and of like digging out the train, clearing the area, building the farms, decorating, building this superstructure, all of that. And that number does not actually include the time I spent in a creative world prepping everything and creating my lightmatic to follow when building this thing in survival, so... Yeah, if I knew how long this project was gonna take, I probably wouldn't have done it the way I did. Here we have the control panel and storage for the flower farm. This farm has a chunk loading grid associated with it. So, if you're more familiar with my Design of Storage System series and storage uh, system control as I showcased in that series, I essentially implemented a stripped back version of that for this flower farm. So if I want to, I can go ahead, uh, set off as if the flower farms to run and turn it on and leave the area and go do something else. And then the chunk loading grid will keep everything loaded and running smoothly. With a bit of a asterisk. Um, so in vanilla Minecraft, if I'm running all 12 farms simultaneously, Performance is about 80 to 85 MSPT. Yeah, not that great. On the bright side, if I'm using lithium, then I'm getting 45 MSPT, which doesn't really leave much performance left over to go off someplace else in my world and do something else while well, the flower farms seem to go ahead and farm all the flowers I want. But on the positive side, I don't have to run them all at the same time. I can pick and choose. If I just want, say, uh, red tulips and uh, some oxy daisies, I can just turn those on specifically, then go over here, press this button, and then once the chunk loading grid has initial initialized, those flower farms will start producing. Additionally, on the control panel, I have these two other buttons for emptying the storage and sending the shulker boxes of items to spawn, and a button for just automatically doing that. Uh, these buttons do nothing right now. It doesn't function because I didn't implement it yet, but my intention is to eventually implement that and then send the items over to spawn. Spawn is just located right over there, just barely out of view. At the top of the control panel here, I have these three redstone lamps, which indicate how full the empty shulker box storage is. And if I want to add to it, I can do so at any time via this chest. 
for these farms, I opted to have a central location for all the empty shulker boxes and then distribute them to all the farms as needed using an empty shulker box request system. I'm not going to go into details about how the empty shulker box request system works because I was supposed to have already covered it uh, in my design at Sora system series. So I'm probably going to be covering that next episode. So I'll, I'll cover the details there. But the important thing to keep in mind is that each of the farms basically only stores up to a double chest of empty shulker boxes. And then once it runs out of empty shulker boxes, it requests more. That way, we're not dealing with the item entity lag of sending all those item entities to a central location to be packed into shulker boxes. Behind the scenes of the flower farm is not really a pretty sight. Everything is kind of spaghetti and it's definitely not my proudest bit of redstone. I was really crunching on this project uh, to try and get it done as quickly as possible and somehow still failing at getting it done as quickly as possible. So yeah, anything I put down, anything I laid out, whatever I came up with first ended up sicking and it really gives off the vibe of uh, redstone is my passion and uh, not in a good way. On the bright side, I really do think this project turned out wonderfully visually. It is so nice to finally have something in my world which not only just functions but has a great visual appeal to it as well. So much of my stuff that I've built in my single player world thus far, it's either like some temporary just purely functional stuff or it's a big hole in the ground. So it's really nice to finally have something that not only looks nice, but actually works as well. That said, if I could go back and do it all over again, I would do it different. No one, not even a technical server, needs 43,000 of a particular flower type per hour. I should have gone for six flower farms and of each farming two types of flowers rather than... 12 and of each one farming their own dedicated flower type. It would have saved a lot of time. It would have helped with the spaghettification of the red zone. And presumably it would have helped with getting this project done sooner. Because this project was just supposed to be a little side project that I quickly get out of the way and before storage system. And uh, well, uh, here we are a year later. So... Yeah, overall, it's it's a project that I'm happy with, but yeah, and if I I I wouldn't do it again. I I would do it different. Back at base, there isn't that much to report on, but there has been some changes and stuff that have happened. First and foremost, the old creeper farm has been ripped out since it is no longer useful as a farm anymore since the updating to 1.18 with the expanded world height. And I guess I never really did mention at any point that uh, I am in 1.19.2 currently. Um, and eventually, I do want to go to 1.20. 1.20 is out right now, of course, uh, but I haven't updated to it yet because, well, I need all the tools I use for making uh, time lapses to all be up to date and stuff before I go ahead and update to a newer, newer version. Hence why I'm still in 1.19.2 because uh, not everything I need into this updated for 1.19.4 even. Back on the surface, and if you saw this during the beginning of the time lapse, is a mangrove tree farm and that I built to end of supply me with all the mangrove wood I needed for the flower farm project. This design right here is by Hayden. Um, and I forget what the rates of it are, but if you're interested in checking it out, and if, I'll have a link in the video description to the TMCA Discord archive post for it. Entering the end real quick, we have the location where the copper farm is. Uh, I'm not going to approach it because, uh, as you can see, there's a, a lot of zombies around. 
And if this little copper farm right here ends of, is a design by inx 4 Sorry, I might be extruding that up. There will be a link in the video description. It's very easy, very simple to build, and very effective. So if you need a copper farm, go ahead and check it out. In terms of other flower types, this leaves only the two tall flowers, the wither rose, and of course the upcoming uh, two flowers related to the sniffer mob in uh, 1.20. So for all of those, um, I'm not going to be building into farms for those at this location. Eventually, probably, you know, someplace else in my world, I'll build farms for those. Um, the two high flowers, though, in particular, Probably just going to have a small farm at my base and only farm on, on an as-needed basis because they're so easy to farm and you don't need to be in a special location for them. And that points out, you know, one of the things with this whole build is its location. Location is very important when deciding where to build something. Ideally, I would have liked to build my flower farm around an end portal for easy item transport to spawn. But when I was looking around at end portals and of near end of my world spawn here, um, I was quickly disappointed, you know, I felt like, hey, you know, I'm going to have to keep looking like farther and farther out, maybe even like 10,000 plus blocks out for an end portal that's over top of a flower forest for a flower farm. And so I decided, hey, I got this, you know, flower forest that's literally right outside of spawn, spawns right over there and just a slightly beyond render distance. So... This made into this location an obvious choice, and especially because in my single player world, I want to try and not spread things too far out. Uh, I really would like it to be you walk away or fly away from one location and end up bumping into another location with something of interest, you know, rather than having like everything like, you know, thousands upon thousands of blocks apart. The time lapse for this episode was a real challenge to put together. I had it in my head into this genius idea. Hey, what if I could make an entire time lapse with no visible cuts throughout the entire thing? Could I make a full time lapse, you know, and with that's completely seamless and so forth? And, you know, I think I basically uh, achieved that for the most part. But dang, I don't think I'll be doing that again anytime soon. It took quite a while uh, to put it all together because. You didn't have to just think about one scene, but like how into that would lead into the next scene and then the next scene. So yeah, it was a real challenge to put together. Spend more time on this time lapse than I generally do spend on uh, other time lapses. All right, with my supply of flowers and in turn dye secured, I guess it's time for me to go and try and pick up the pieces of the Design and Sword System series. So remember guys, if you're ever doing a flower farm project and you have the urge to build a poppy farm for the sake of completeness, because 12 is a nice even number, don't do it. And I'll catch y'all later. Bye.